Bye bye, little buddy. How much nitrous oxide can a bone stock short block take? That's what we're gonna find out on this episode of Engine Masters presented by Amsoil and supported by Mr. Gasket and Earl's Plumbing. Here's the thing, nitrous does not blow up engines, people blow up engines, and we're gonna show you how to not be that guy. We're gonna take steps along the way here as we make more and more nitrous oxide power to show you how you can tune to actually prevent an explosion. But let's be honest, there's no entertaining in not exploding and there's no chance that that sucker lives. This is a stock Chevy small block. It's a 305, so it's no loss, no crying, dry your tears, because that sucker is gonna go with its cast crank, stock rod, stock bolts, cast pistons, it's junk but we have hopped it up a little bit. It's got a Comp XE268 hydraulic flat tappet cam. That is an Engine Quest Vortec head. It has aluminum roller rockers, also from Comp. Big Hankin single plane intake manifold. Big Hankin 850 double pumper. And of course, the precious, the two-stage NOS cheater capable of 500 horsepower. But is that motor capable of a 500 shot? No but we're gonna find out how much it will take. First, we're gonna run into the dyno and baseline this thing and find out how much power this pooch makes naturally aspirated. Amsoil knew that we were gonna splatter the guts of this thing all over the dyno cell walls and they said, you know what, when that happens, it's not gonna be the oil's fault because, bam, Dominator racing oil. They've recommended this every time that we've gone with a supercharged or nitrous application because it has a really tough film strength so that the oil doesn't squirt out from between the bearing and the rod under that heavy pressure. But what's interesting is that they went this time with the SAE 60 weight oil for the 305's final meal. This is the equivalent of going to the chair for an engine. guilty now. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're about to shoot a puppy. That thing runs pretty good. <laughs> what did this thing make? 358 horsepower and 323 pound feet of torque. And look at the torque curve. No, it's good. It, it really is good. I mean, if this thing were in a guy's Camaro with a 150 shot on it, which we know we can do, this would be good. Ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, nitrous time with NOS nitrous. You can't say NOS. You can't say Nas, it's clown shoes. Just don't do it. Here's how nitrous oxide works. Stored here in this bottle, it's a liquid. You inject it into the engine, it's a vapor, and you got all these little molecules that have one atom of oxygen and two of nitrogen. And because you've got oxygen in there and you're injecting it into the engine, you're bringing more air into the engine, which means that you can burn more fuel. When you burn more fuel and more air, all smashed into the combustion chamber, you make a bigger explosion and more power. Here's how you do that. You inject the nitrous and supplemental gasoline into your engine with some kind of a plate system. This happens to be a plate that goes underneath a Holley carburetor. It is an NOS cheater two-stage setup capable of 500 horsepower of additional nitrous into your engine. Now, as I said, nitrous doesn't blow up motors, people do. So people can take steps to make sure that doesn't happen. And here's what we're gonna do. You must control detonation when you're on nitrous oxide. The first thing that we're gonna do with that is run Rocket Brand 118 octane gas. That will just control that detonation, help the thing survive a little bit longer. Next thing you have to do with nitrous, because that explosion happens so much faster than it does naturally aspirated, you have to retard the ignition timing. Otherwise, the cylinder pressure is fighting the piston 
coming up and that is just disastrous. What we're gonna do to prevent that is use an MSD power grid ignition system, which is pretty advanced. MSD also makes a bunch of other lower end boxes that are designed to retard ignition timing right when you hit your nitrous oxide button. So you always wanna do that. Spark plugs. When you're running nitrous, you need to run a colder spark plug range. Now remember, that doesn't mean anything about the power of the spark itself. Instead, it is the temperature of the center electrode there because of the length of the path to the cooling passage. So that is a very cold spark plug right there. Also in your tune-up, you really need to pay attention to your air-fuel ratio. You can hurt your engine whether it's too lean, meaning not enough gas, or if it's too rich. A lot of people say fat and happy, that is not necessarily true. You go too rich, you can hurt your engine on nitrous. I highly recommend you get an oxygen sensor like this and a reader to power it and either a data logger or a gauge or something so that you know that you're in the range of say 12 and a half to one at wide open throttle on your nitrous. Remember, the air fuel ratio that makes the most power naturally aspirated on your engine is the same air fuel ratio that will make the most power on the nitrous. Now, that's all a bunch of tuning steps that you can largely take care of with this chingadera right here. This is a nitrous controller. It happens to be an NOS launcher. This is a really advanced controller that can do a lot of things. It can shut off your nitrous if you're too rich or too lean. It can read your nitrous bottle pressure. It can activate your nitrous in a whole bunch of different ways, throttle switch, whatever you want to do. But most importantly, it can control the behavior of how you're applying the nitrous to the engine because you'll hurt an engine if you just hit it with the nitrous really hard. What you'd rather do instead of hitting it like this is give it a nice push. Put the nitrous into the engine in a delay over time, and that's what this can do. We can ramp the nitrous from say 50% to 100% power delivery over a period of time that we select. You'll see that as we move on today. Now, the last thing that we didn't control at all in this test is the fact that you want your engine to have good internal parts, forge, pistons, rods, crank. Our 305 has none of that. Here's what the problem with that is. Not only can the pistons be fragile and just fail under the power, but a big deal is piston ring end gap. Of course, the piston ring goes in here, seals the piston to the cylinder. Now, the end gap right there, of course, gets much smaller when you put this thing inside the engine. The problem is, if you are gapped for just a regular street engine, when the ring heats up under nitrous, that gap can close up. When it does, it breaks the piston. That's probably what we're gonna see here today, and it could lead to catastrophic failure. The smart thing to do is to take any engine apart that you're gonna run with a power adder and just file those rings further open. Did we do that? No, but I bet you this thing will live through the 150 shot of nitrous that we're gonna start with right now. You ready to spray it? Yeah. Yeah? Got all the wiring tidied up and everything. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have this thing set up right now just on one stage. It's 150 horsepower. We already have it jetted. We've already verified when it's running naturally aspirated that the MSD is pulling the timing out like we want to. It's got 35 degrees total naturally aspirated. And as soon as we hit the nitrous, it drops to 29 for the 150 horsepower level. This is the handheld controller for the NOS launcher. And you can go through the menu here and and do all the settings. I am not going to ramp the nitrous in on the 150 horsepower setup. We're just gonna hit the button, boom, 150 horsepower. Later on, you'll see us tuning more with this. So the last thing we have to do is hook up the hose to the nitrous bottle, which we are monitoring pressure very carefully here. You want like 950 pounds of bottle pressure and we need that to be stable through all our tests just because that's a way to maintain a consistency and to make sure that you're delivering enough nitrous to the engine. If the pressure's down, it'll go lean. What we've got here is a hot water bath for the nitrous bottle that we'll throw it in right here. And the perfect temperature for it is 92 degrees. Look at that. As if by magic, it is at 93, 92. So that bottle is set. We're gonna hook up a line directly to the nitrous solenoids and bam! We got it fired up, bottles open, 150 horsepower ready to go. Are you gonna purge it? Yeah, just one real quick. Yeah, it's just gonna blip it. Our 
550 horsepower. 305 is making 537 horsepower. Five no, 57. 557 horsepower. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. 200. 200. <laughs> that happens a lot, actually. We noticed that the factory jetting ends up delivering more. How are we looking on air fuel ratio? Well, I have to tell you, part of that is because when the, when the system is optimized and you've looked at everything as far as air fuel ratio and timing and it's all doing what it's supposed to do, it's not unusual that they make a little more power than they're actually rated. So what's our call right now? I'm already impressed. I, I, I say we just put it to bed and... I know, it's pretty happy. You know, put yeah. a blanket over it and say we... <laughs> more that was good. <laughs> okay, so this is a good setup, right? It is. Yeah. Let's so, uh, step it up. What would be better? <laughs> More power. Yeah. You're using your croissant wrench. Just bleeding the pressure out of the line so it doesn't seep into the engine. Always a good precaution. What we're doing here is changing the jets in the nitrous system. Here's your jet. And these are very much like jets in a carburetor. They're just a metered orifice. This thing has a hole in it that is a fixed size. This one, I believe, we just ran was a 63 on the nitrous, 59 on the fuel. You never want to put more nitrous in it without getting the right amount of extra fuel in, or you might just burn the whole thing down. Now that we're stepping up the power levels, I don't want to smack the motor as hard. So instead of going all the nitrous all in, I am going to ramp it up so that when Steve hits the button, it gives us 50% of the nitrous hit and then goes up to 100% over one second. Now we've got it jetted to 250. I think we're finally gonna see that 305 crest 600, right? That's the idea. Unless you pulled out too much time. Wow, that would be awesome. Safe. Just trying to be conservative. Yeah. That is awesome. We just made 620 horsepower with a 305 Chevy. Exactly Holy two horsepower per cube. Wow. That's hilarious. I've gone through like the emotional roller coaster. Really? Because at first I was like, oh, this is a junk 305. We're just going to scatter it against the floor of Steve's dino cell. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I love that warm and cuddly 305 that's making good power. And now I'm like, I want it to make 700 and live. It's I don't want to blow it up anymore. Well, you figure if anything pays you back that high of a dividend, oh, yeah. then it deserves to go back. Yeah, you can't put it down. It's no yeah. longer like old Yeller. No. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> so next step, two systems, 150 each, and I'm going to go into the controller and we're going to ramp both of them from 50% to 100%. All right. That's the thing. I'll get the bottle ready. smoke out the valve covers. Okay, well, I think we owe it to the 305 to tear the heads off and see what went wrong. I want to see how hurt it is. It's not catastrophic, though. I mean, it's still in one piece, for the most part. Yeah, rods aren't hanging out of the bottom of it, so. Yeah, that's positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and this one's hurt bad. What do you see? Piston on it. This is out of the number two cylinder, and look how it's got silver all over it, and in fact, it's filled up the crevice there between the porcelain and the metal here. That 
is aluminum off the piston and there's some oil in there too. This is the number four cylinder and you can see that it's got some of that also and it was a little wet when we first pulled it out. So our guess is that it just killed a head gasket between the number two and four cylinders. But what we really want to do is pull it apart and find out how dead that piston is. When you melt your piston and completely fill up your spark plug, that's yeah. usually not good. Right. What are those little chunky metallic bits? <laughs> <laughs> that's piston. Yeah. Piston sand. Yeah, we gather here not to mourn the death of the 305, but to celebrate the nitrous horsepower yeah, of the 305. That's right. This is not a funeral. This is a celebration of life. That's right. Oh. oh. Yeah, it pinched a ring. What you can see here really clearly is just classic nitrous failure with an engine that is not nitrous ready. Right here, the whole top of this piston is missing just fractured and it's beat up here from the pieces flying into the chamber and getting smashed. What happens is that the piston ring, which I can see the end gap is right there, it butts together and then lifts like this because it's a circle, it's got nowhere to go, it's got to expand somewhere. It cracks the piston and then the piston just destroys itself. We are lucky that the piston didn't shatter and then the connecting rod swings around, just saws the block in half and you end up throwing away everything underneath the carburetor. This thing's actually savable. The cylinder wall's not even that bad. Ah, oh, poor baby. We made two horsepower per cubic inch out of a 305 Chevy. And then we blew it up. Uh, you know, this was the completely textbook predictable result of what we were doing here. But I think the real lesson is if you want to do this, take the engine apart, file that ring end gap wide open, just let it be junk. And yeah. then you can spray a lot more than we did because the failure was nothing more than that. We were changing your tune now. It was a blown head gasket in the dyno cell. It did blow the head gasket. Yeah. After, after that happened. <laughs> I guess you're right. So we were both right on that. But it did pretty well. I'm pretty proud of the 305. You know, can you really call us engine masters when this happens? You can. And yeah. you can actually watch this show 30 plus days early if you subscribe to MotorTrendOnDemand.com. And you'll see the next episode there right now. Of course, you can always watch us here as well. And that's a wrap until next time on Engine Masters, presented by Amsoil and supported by Mr. Gasket and Earl's Plumbing. Are you on MotorTrendOnDemand.com yet? You need to be because then you would get access to Engine Masters shows 30 days early. And you know what? There's also a show on there called Roadkill Garage, which is me and Steve Dulcich fooling around with even more stuff and honestly butchering it even more than we do on Engine Masters. Right now, here's a sneak peek at the next episode of Engine Masters that is live right now on MotorTrendOnDemand.com. This time we are gonna hop up a Junkyard Jewel Mopar 360. Dulcich, do you think we can make 400 horsepower with this thing? Oh yeah. Go check out this episode of Engine Masters now at Motor Trend On Demand. You gotta make sure not to touch the nitrous when it's coming out. It will literally burn you. Wow. <laughs> that was dangerous, Freiberger. I know. You know what this 305 is like right now? What's that? It's like a puppy on your farm. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, where it's a nice, cute little warm puppy and you like to play with it and it's a good doggy, but you know it's not gonna last long. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> now I'm a puppy killer? It's true. Well, we kind of know what went wrong, but now we've got to tear it apart and actually have a look and see what the level of death is. Because, you know, death on an engine is not really a black and white situation. Unlike a puppy, which is either alive oh, or dead. Here we go, <laughs> like a puppy. It's more definitive when you're talking puppies. Yeah. 305s, there's more gray area.